What's up everybody, this is Infamous NYC coming at you with another build video for the Magpilar. Uh, if you've been following my stream on Twitch, um, I have been doing a lot of Magpilar Battlegrounds PvP. I've been working on a Magpilar for the upcoming patch. I know they're going to be getting buffed. And I know a lot of people are going to be looking for a really good Magpilar uh, build to run for next patch. This build is ready to run this patch. All the, all the, uh, the sets that you need are available currently. We're running five light build. Yes, we're running a five light build, no damage shield. You don't need one. This is a no CP build. Uh, you can see here we're in no CP PVP, as it says up in the corner. It's kind of blocked out by my logo. It says champion points bonuses have been disabled uh, in this Alliance War campaign. So this is a no CP PVP, uh, dual wield, light armor, resto, um, PvP is a high damage, high resistance. You can see my spell, uh, my unbuffed spell damage there in the corner, 2246. So let's jump right in. So I chose for my race, I uh, went Dark Elf. I feel that Dark Elf is your best option when it comes to a Magplar DPS build. Um, you lose too much damage um, going either, uh, if you're going to go Argonian for heals, um, <coughs> I feel the extra 5% is just not needed. If you're going for a heal plar, go Argonian. For a DPS build, you're going to want Dark Elf for numerous reasons that we'll go over. Uh, firstly, uh, from the Dark Elf passives, we gain... Uh, here we go. It says reduced damage taken from environmental lava. So if you're playing this in battlegrounds, you gain reduced damage to... Uh, there's like the, the pit area where there's lava in there. You gain reduced damage to that. Um, as well as you gain increased max magicka and stamina by 6%. So of course we want that extra damage and of course the extra stamina for CC breaking, blocking, roll dodging, etc. And then we get on top of that, we gain another 3% uh, max magicka as well as flame resistance. And that 2079 is roughly equivalent to just over 3% uh, flame mitigation. So in Battlegrounds there are a lot of Dragon Knights a lot of people using flame staffs, um, fire wheel, etc. Um, so at least we'll gain a little bit more uh, damage reduction to that, as well as gaining immunity to the burning status effect. And so if you run a Destro staff, um, the or is it the elemental force? It says it increases the chance to apply either burning, concussion, chills. So that burning effect is actually a dot that does extra damage, it does quite a bit of extra damage, especially on a Dragon Knight. And all of the Dragon Knight and Flame abilities have a chance to proc this extra damage. So as a Dark Elf, we just mitigate that 100%. Fantastic, can't ask for anything better. It's also one less dot that you need to cleanse. So that's why I recommend going Dark Elf uh, for, for this build. Also, we gain increased flame damage by 7%. And if you're doing frost or shock damage, you'll gain an extra 2%. So, so our reflective light does flame damage as well if you use abilities like um, if you're using a meteor or if you were using uh, a destro staff then you'd gain the eight um, percent to single target abilities the extra eight percent damage from that on top of the extra seven percent um, from being a dark elf so i highly recommend being a dark elf uh, for this build if you were to put uh, you know if you had an infused chant and you wanted to go fire on your uh, flame glyph, you get an extra 7%. So it's definitely worth going. I highly recommend going Dark Elf. With that, like I said, this is a light armor build. We definitely want that light armor for the crit, for those beautiful passives that light armor brings to the table. And so we're running five light. This is a 511. I'm currently missing my Undaunted. So if, if you're if you're looking at my stat page, you'll see I'm, I'm missing roughly 6%, which is quite a bit. I'm missing almost 2,000 uh, Magicka, somewhere around 1,800 health, and then maybe like another 800 in kind of terms of stamina. So that's a pretty big amount. I'm working towards that right now. Uh, I'm currently level 4. I'm working towards getting to, I think it was level 9, passive or rank number 9, so I can get those extra stats. It's going to be beautiful. Beautiful build, does a lot of damage. I got a lot of clips, a lot of footage, um, both Twitch and as well as my YouTube. So I wanted to hit around the sweet spot of between 30, 32,000 uh, Magicka and no CP. Uh, put out a really good amount of damage, um, give you enough sustain for the sets that we're running. As well as currently, 
our health is 20,000 and our stamina is 13.7 for no CP. With the 6% from the Undaunted, you'll see it, depending upon how you build, we're going to go over a little bit of uh, parts of the aspect, but roughly you're going to either sit around 30,000 between 32,000, depending upon what you choose and how to run this build. We're going to be sitting at just about 22, 9,000 um, health and just under 15K is like 14, 8. Um, once we once we gain the six percent from the undaunted and I finish you know golding out my gear, unbuff we're running twenty two forty six spell resistance we're running uh, twenty percent critical and no CP we gain ten percent uh, critical um, as base we gain another ten percent from running lion armor. If you noticed, our spell resistance and physical resistance is pretty high. And this is unbuffed, unbuffed physical dam physical uh, and spell resistance. Sitting spell resistance sitting at almost 25.5 physical resistance just shy of 21k recoveries are a little low but we'll go over that in the build in a moment uh, and our critical resistance is low because um, currently I, I didn't feel like farming for the correct traits so right now I'm just doing PvP for the transmutation stones to transmute my gear but basically what I'm shooting for is for five in pen um, one reinforced and one one reinforced and well, uh, one sturdy. Looks like we got a, a guy in Cyrodiil coming for a Sky Shard. So like I said, this is a 511. I'm running the Mage, Mundestone, as well as um, Tristat Food. Jumping into our sets. So the reason for, I will go over the first set, um, which is a very familiar set, Desert Rose which gives us beautiful, that beautiful 2900 spell resistance. It gives us max health, which we need. It's the only health that we're getting from the build, as well as giving us a little extra max magicka for sustain and damage. And then it's the fifth piece is when you take damage, you have a 15% chance to restore 2352, and it's gonna happen every four seconds. So conservatively speaking, over the course of a one minute fight, let's just say we get hit four times, it procs four times, we get 8K. That's very, 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 very conservative. Uh, so over the course of, typically it's gonna proc, I'd say at least six to eight, six times in a span of one minute, and that's a lot of, uh, of magic of recovery. But you have to be able to take damage, and you usually see Desert Rose run on things like a Dragon Knight because they're very tanky. They usually run a Sword and Shield build, so they can take a lot of damage, which they need to, to be able to work with De Desert Rose because Desert Rose requires you to take damage. Um, if you're busy, you know, LOSing around a tree or whatever, and you're not getting hit, um, outside of having a dot on you, that set isn't really gonna be worth all that much to you. Or if you get blown up in two seconds, you know, you eat a Dawn Break into the face with a Shulk, and then you just kind of explode, then that basically set doesn't do anything for you if you can't take a hit. And that's why we're going over these pieces to show why we can take a hit, how we have these higher, how we higher resistances. So our second piece, uh, second set that we're running is Jerkin of the Desert Rose. And again, excuse me, not, uh, the um, Sash of the Magic of Furnace, because uh, I wanted something that, like a set that came with a lot of resistances, but at the same time was in light. And I also needed something that was gonna give me sustain. So you might be thinking, well, you could run something like, um, What's it called? The one that procs the minor main, that light armor set. I, uh, I forget what it's called. Um, but that doesn't give you any, any. it doesn't give you the resistance that you need. And it's an after the fact. So you take damage first and then you mitigate it. So if you get burst, it really doesn't do much for the burst because you're, you're taking all that, you're taking all the upfront damage very quickly. Um, also because that set, you know, sets doesn't give you any, uh, it doesn't give you any sustain. This set is perfect. It gives us the physical resistance that we need. Most of the builds that are coming out nowadays are stem blades, uh, stem wardens that hit really, really hard. So we want that high physical resistance, especially for builds that come in with uh, armor bypass. So we get, we're getting 2,900 for the two piece. We're getting more max magicka. We'll help with, with, help with our damage and sustain. And then we're getting that nice 126 spell damage. Five pieces, when you take damage from a melee attack, again, most of the builds out in Cyrodiil are gonna be stamina melee builds. So you, I wouldn't worry about this proccing. And it says, and the wonderful thing is that it really isn't wasted because it comes in when we're under 80% Magicka and restores 7,800, 14 Magicka. That's gonna occur 
every 30 seconds. So basically, if we were to do a little bit of the math there um, for this set, so once you gold the set out, it's 8,000 every 30 seconds. We gain uh, 8,000, and then we'll divide that over 15 ticks, right? Because regen is roughly every two seconds. That comes out to 533 uh, Magicka Recovery. Uh, and so we're running, uh, we can afford to run low Magicka Recovery because we're also getting an, uh, basically an extra 533 on top of what, we're, what we have right here, uh, which is 600. Next sets that we're running, originally I was thinking of running this in five, uh, five uh, light two heavy, but I didn't feel like farming for a heavy helm. So I think it'll work just fine in terms of actually, we'll actually be getting more raw stats because we'll be running five one one uh, instead of a five two. So we'll gain an extra 2% from the Undaunted um, for our health magic of stamina. So I'm running um, reinforced medium mighty chudin which also gives us roughly 3000 spell resistance and then we're running pirate skeleton which also gives us the exact same bonus it's just not golded out so i'm going to gold gold this out later this week um, i'm running sturdy so that, so that we can block incoming ccs um, and so this is a huge amount of mitigation you might be thinking well why don't you run something like uh like blood spawn blood spawn is rng so basically you take a lot of damage and you hope for a proc when you need it um, but you in the meantime you eat if you get bursted well then that proc doesn't do anything for you because it comes after the fact and it's rng based i don't like rng based uh, mitigation i prefer to have this up front and it gives me roughly the amount blood spawn gives you what 66 6400 and this is going to give us roughly around 59 6k uh, in terms of mitigation that 6k, uh, we'll, just, we'll just say it's around 6,000, and in CP and in PvP, 1% um, to mitigation is 660, and that gives us roughly roughly 9% mitigation just from these two pieces. So we're getting 9% from, from our one pieces that we're in here, and you have three options. You can run um, either Pirate Skeleton, Mighty Chudin, as well as Lord Warden, all three of those one pieces will give you the, the uh, roughly that 3000 spell resistance so you can either run it as a five light two heavy or a five one one that's entirely up to you um, you'll gain either a little bit more resources by running the uh, the five one one or you gain a little bit more um of the uh passive regen from running an extra piece of heavy armor from the constitution passive so it's entirely up to you. I'm running a 511 just because I don't feel like farming for a heavy helm. And it basically works out again, an extra 2% in HP, stamina, and as well as Magicka. So that works out just fine. So that's why we're sitting at such high resistance. In terms of the jewelry, we're running two spell damage. And because I didn't like having subs, like almost 517 stam recovery, I chose to run a stammer recovery glyph on my last uh, on my last jewelry, and I'm I, I really like the protective set. I feel that it is an entirely underrated uh, trait that's not utilized by a lot of PVPers. This this gives you roughly three percent mitigation for the eight hundred um, magicka that we lose. Don't even feel it. I actually run two protective gold on my hybrid DK, and it's so tanky. I run it in six heavy. With the two protective, I set such high spell resistance that it's beautiful. I take very little damage and I'm able to dish out a lot of damage because in this particular build, both DK and Templar share the same problem that they don't have a lot of mobility. So you find up, if you find yourselves fighting in basically you versus multiple opponents, you're taking damage from range, you're taking damage from the opponent that you're hitting. So you want to be able to mitigate as much of that damage on top of the fact that you have a lot of people that are running either spell penetration or physical penetration so you don't want to have all your all your all of your armor mitigated so that's why i wanted to shoot for something that would have really high spell resistance and physical resistance while maintaining that light armor burst burst uh burst damage that we get from running light armor and so in going over the benefits of light armor we gain a little bit more recovery, 20%. Not that big a deal because we're not running high recovery on this on this build. We gain uh, 
reduce costs, which is great because Templar abilities do cost a pretty, pretty, pretty good amount. They're very expensive. You're looking at some of these abilities that are close to 4K in terms of your execute and your burst heal. Uh, you're looking at roughly 4K, I'd say a base of around 3K for most of our abilities. Um, and then we're also getting a little bit more spell resistance, which is great. There's going to be a lot of uh, light armor sorks that have high burst, so if we can mitigate more of that damage. It's great. The, be the best benefits of running the light armor is the extra 10% in critical, which come critical damage, uh, excuse me, critical chance which basically increases both our heal critical as well as being able to do critical damage. And the modifier is 1.5. So when you perform a critical attack or perform a critical heal, the, the, you do 1.5 times that amount. So instead of doing, you know, fully buffed up, this is 10, 10K, um, we do 15K, right? Just, just, the, just the base. Templar gains an extra 10% from one of their passives as well as we're getting an extra 10% from running one of our abilities here in the Sigic Order line. So we definitely want that critical critical passive. It's beautiful, does extra damage, does extra healing. One of the great benefits of running light armor, but of course this build, we're not all that squishy. Next we're running the, the Concentration Passage, which gives us Armor Bypass. That 4,800 in terms of uh, Armor Bypass is roughly an extra, really, let me, let me just double check that. 4884. Eight, yeah, it's just about 7% extra damage because of that concentration passive. So, bypassing 484 of the person's spell resistance causes us to do an extra, it's, it, actually, it's 7.4%. Not sure if ESO just rounds that shit right down. So, we'll just conservatively say running light armor, you're doing an extra 7% damage over running uh, heavy armor build. Again, and then roughly you gain an extra 3%, I believe, from just having that passive uh, in Prodigy for the extra critical. So that's basically running a uh, light armor build, you're doing 10% more damage over running a heavy armor build, as well as getting the benefits of higher heals. With that, we're also running the one piece of heavy armor, which is going to give us a little bit more armor spell resistance. It's going to give us... Um, increase 4% health recovery, not all that important. And every time we take, every four seconds that we take a hit, we're getting back an extra 108, which is like 54 um, in terms of, of recovery. And then uh, we also gain an extra 2% per piece. We're only running one piece. If you choose to run um, an extra piece, you'll gain that bonus. But if you're running a 511, you'll still gain 2% from the 511 because of the Undaunted Passes. But you also gain an extra 2% uh, magicka, uh, Max Magicka as well as Max Stam. For the medium armor passives, I actually need to put these in. So we'll get a little... Oh, actually don't even need that. What we need, to, what we can take is you can take the Windrunner for reducing... For giving you a little bit more Stam recovery. That's fine. Uh, we're not running any stamina abilities, so that's kind of useless. Reduces the cost of sneak. Not really going to be sneaking on this build. <coughs> Excuse me. But we can take the last one, which is the, the run speed. Uh, reduces the cost of sprint and gives you a little bit more and reduces the cost of, uh, of dodge roll. So those are the benefits of running that 511. You gain a little bit more recovery as well as um, increasing the movement speed of sprint as well as reducing the cost of roll dodge. So we'll take that great benefit to running a 511. For our weapons, we're running dual wield. Uh, reason we're running for dual wield is because uh, the last passive there, each sword increases your damage by 2.5%. Not all that big. I'm only running one sword. Um, the reason being is because the other weapon that I'm running is an axe for that physical damage right there, 8% chance to proc a bleed. This is one of the reasons why stand builds are so strong is because they're basically able to mitigate all of your physical resistance just with the passives. The, the uh, most of the damage from rending, you know, from like twin slashes that you see rending slashes as well as the twin blood and blade, it just basically goes straight through your mitigation. So if you're capped at physical resistance, it just goes right through it. It's so I decided, you know what, let's take a page out of stamina. 2% more by running an extra sword isn't going to be all that fantastic, right? Um, you're looking at a 10k radiant. 2.5% more damage is 250. That gets cut in half in Cyrodiil to 125. Not really going to do much for your build, uh, but an extra dot 
that basically goes through mitigation and it's free it's free it goes so it'll go through their mitigation it goes uh, it'll go if a person if you catch someone with a damage shield down it'll the damage will go will, right uh will, will bypass the uh the damage shield so i've been testing that out i think fully buffed it's around five five thousand a little over five thousand so you're gonna actually 2500 dot over six seconds it's free can't complain figured i'd give it a try the extra two percent from just running a sword really not going to hurt the build all that much anyway uh, in our back bar we're running a resto let's grab that i'm still in the middle of uh running the using the pat um leveling it up I'm basically just running the resto. I'm considering running either the resto alt. I'm still on thinking about using a combat pair on my back bar as a buff. Um, but right now, it's kind of like still in the middle of testing. If you like combat pair for that extra 8% increased damage, go right for it. Toss that on your back bar right before you're going to go into a top lane charge uh, crescent sweep burst. And you'll be and you'll do an extra eight percent percent extra eight percent damage but i kind of like it just so that in case i need to heavy attack my heavy attacks are not dodged but most of the time i really don't run dry unless i'm getting focused down by a lot of people um and i'm forced into uh spamming heals and i'll toss in a heavy attack uh, also because i'm running glyph on the back bar i'm um, going back to um our sets here i'm running uh, uh Magic of Damage as well as a Restore Glyph on our Nernhone Axe. Again, we're, um, you want Nernhone on your main hand weapon for the extra spell damage. As well as I'm running the Infused um, Weapon Glyph on my front bar uh, for higher uptime. Um, you really don't want to run it on your back bar. I need to swap this out. Uh, currently running Defending. I want to switch that over into a Decisive. I'll go over that in a second. But you want that, you want that Glyph on your front bar. So that uh, also I run the axe on the main hand because that's the first one that swings. So uh, it's higher chance to proc, proc the, um, the passive from the twin blade and blunt for that axe bleed. Um, but then you also want to next patch, I believe, um, you know, whichever one is on cooldown, it will automatically proc that glyph. This glyph basically has um, reduces the cooldown by 50%, so you can have almost 100% uptime. Um, on that extra weapon and spell damage, which will push it up really high in terms of our max spell, max spell, uh, spell damage that we'll be running. Let's see if I can show you guys fully buffed up. Let's come over here. So we're currently we're at 20 unbuffed 22 what is that, 2246 and so we'll buff up 2800 without the glyph and almost 3400 spell spell damage 3372 it's pretty good it's a lot of damage on top of that 30,000 max magica you're gonna hit really hard with that said let's go back into uh, the build video so the back bar the reason that I wanted to run a decisive trait was because the back bar we're running skills like pres like uh, refractive light refractive light um here we go we'll cast we'll we'll give us prism which is basically gives us extra ultimate and so when we're on our back bar and we're going through our rotation here or if you're losing so that's quite a bit of time to be on the back bar all that time the defense the uh decisive trade gives us 40 percent more chance to earn an extra one ultimate. So on that back bar, we were running through, you're getting three ultimate per second, you get an extra, what is it, three from the prism. And so that'll help us to be able to pop out more ultis. Front bar, we're running uh, puncturing sweep. As you can see, they're unbuffed. Unbuffed and no CP. We're looking at roughly 2K. Um, that does, that'll heal us for 40% of the damage. Fully buffed up, I think it's about almost 26, 2700 per sweep. Let's just double check that real quick. We'll go in here, we'll buff up. So we can get an idea of fully buff one of our sweeps. So fully buffed up, about 24. 2490, I guess with the 8%. Uh, and we're missing a little bit from our max magica. But we're probably going to sit around fully buffed up 
around 2500 damage if you choose to run um where is it the resto combat pair on your back bar i think that's what it was i think that's where i calculated it because uh, originally i was going to use this on my back bar for the buff uh, but 2400 is just fine uh, we're running toppling charge for the stun and for the gap close i'm thinking of changing this out to explosive charge um just because I've had issues where I've gap closed to Nightblaze, and if you gap close like right at the same time as they cloak, you do nothing. It basically will pull, bring you to the target, but you do no damage and you don't stun. Whereas if you ran Explosive Charge, Explosive Charge does AOE damage, so it would pull him out of cloak as well as doing damage. You don't get the stun, that's okay, but at least we're not wasting resources doing absolutely no damage. Um, the other reason is because uh, I, wa I wanted to switch out and run, maybe get rid of purifying light and run core the reason being is because i have been having issues where once you once you gap close to your opponent unfortunately it has a minimum range and so if you're fighting another templar and he basically he's jabbing you and jabs basically reduces your movement speed for two seconds and it's on you like once if you can't move out of the way of the jabs it's, it's just on you that slow is on you forever so then you have no way to cc your opponent and so you want that extra unstable core and i think i'm going to be testing that um this probably, probably on monday i'll be testing that and then we're running radiant glory you can see there tooltip is 10k that's basically a great execute um and of course i chose this morph so that when we're in the middle of executing and we're getting hit by other opponents we're, we're healing for 20 percent um, of that damage as well as honor the dead honor the dead is a great solo heal um, this is not the uh, the one that you use when you're in groups where you wave your, wave your hands and you just randomly heal people who are at low health. I predominantly use this. Um, it has great potential for sustain. So when you're sitting at roughly um, 18k health, you'll gain back 60% um, of the cost. So that's great in terms of helping us reduce the cost of this ability because it is very expensive. So we're going to be getting back 60%. Um, of that 4,000 magicka, which is roughly what, 2,400. Um, so that's great. That's a, that's a lot of uh, sustain uh, for a build that is running low sustain in terms of our recovery. Um, the reason that we're running accelerated uh, channeled acceleration on the front bar is one for mobility. Magic Magplar has no no mobility. The, the outside, if you're not running a gap closer, this is how you're getting to your opponent. You're you're running to your opponent. So what this does is it gives us, it has a little channel ability, and that's not a problem, but it gives us that 9 seconds of major expedition, as well as 36 per seconds, or 36 seconds of giving us extra critical damage. So this gives you uh, minor force for 36 seconds, uh, and, and also the other reason that you want it on your, your front bar is because of the passive from the Sigic Order line concentrated barrier so when you block boom you get that 2500 damage shield um, because we're have such high physical spell resistance right we're basically fully buffed or almost we're capped spell resistance just shy of the cap and physical resistance so that 2500 shield gains 50 percent mitigation in terms of spell resistance so if you're fighting another mage build that 3500 you actually it's actually it's actually like you have a 12 37 3700 almost 4k damage shield because of your resistance because you're capped because the next patch um resistances will be taken into consideration when it comes to damage shields so that's great so i typically only block uh, for like an incoming cc a fire wheel or someone's uh, shield charging me or another templar that's using charge i'm uh, basically any sort of a cc that i can block that's typically when i'll block or if I'm getting hit by multiple opponents and I see like a frag coming, I'll block the frag. That's why uh, that's why I'm running that, that piece of sturdy. Um, I'm considering running another piece of sturdy. Uh, if I think if you were running too uh, uh, too heavy, then I would go too sturdy. Um, I'll see how it goes in the build. Even with my low impen, I really don't get blown up. So I'll, I'm debating on maybe running some different traits. Um, but it's entirely up to you what you feel comfortable with. I, I feel comfortable not running a lot of impen as I really don't take that kind of burst damage with this build. Again, impen is RNG based. It's based if you if you get hit by a critical, then you'll reduce the critical portion of the damage, not the entire amount of the damage. 
And so in NoCP, most people are sitting around 30, maybe 40% on a, on a Mac, on a, on a, anybody that's running like maybe Julianos, if they're sitting, I think on my Magic Assorc, I'm like 40% in NoCP, which basically means that 60% of the time your impen is doing nothing. That's important. It's important to keep in mind um, the type of trait that you're running, but I feel comfortable running this as is, so I may play around with some different different traits um, once, I, once I get those transmute stones. But like I was saying, um, so yeah, that's why we're running the Sigic Order line for that damage shield, for the mobility, for the extra critical damage. And then next patch, we're Crescent, I, I uh, was leveling this, this morph, um, Crescent will be turned into a Magical Morph. Basically, we'll just do magic damage, and then enemies in front of you will take 60%, uh, 66 percent more damage. So basically, I gap clap close um, to my opponent. Let's see if I can find someone to gap close to. Okay, there's, a, there's a mob over here, and basically, it, it you gap close to your opponent, light attack for the. And hopefully, you'll get the glyph proc, and then it does some AOE damage. As you'll see there, the press and sweep does pretty good damage. I've hit people. Roughly between, I say 5,500 and 8,500. I've, I've hit people for up to 8,500 just on that initial hit, and this is using the morph that doesn't take into account my critical, my spell critical, or my my bypass, my uh, spell resistance bypass. So that's an extra 10% that I'm missing um, from Crescent because right now the physical morph takes into account your physical penetration as well as your uh, physical crit and as well so next patch it's going to be hitting even harder um, it, it works really good now I have no regrets using Crescent over maybe like a Dawnbreaker it's really cheap it costs 72 ultimate which is why I was talking about before about running that back bar decisive because you can ooh, you can cut people in half this I you can check out I posted some videos where I've hit multiple opponents and I've been doing 7k 8k 8k damage to multiple opponents and you just see like their HP just drop. They just they're, they're looking at their death recap like what the fuck is that? On the back bar, we're running a resto. We're running structured entropy for the major sorcery buff, as well as a little bit more um, max health on the back bar. Not really all that important. You could run the other morph if you wanted um, for your light attacks to have a chance to proc the extra. It's like 115 percent of the damage that you do. Um, you can heal for it. On the back bar, we're running Reflective Light. Reflective Light does more damage than Vampire's Bane. So as long as you can keep the buff up, if there are multiple opponents that stack there, um, they would basically, all of them would take the, would get hit by the orb. They would all get the slow. Uh, it does do more, it does do more damage in terms of damage per second, as well as the potential to hit multiple opponents. The downside is that you have to cast it every six seconds to gain, to gain the buff. Um, running Reflective Light, once we activate it, it gives us our spell critical buff, as well as Templar has a passive in the Dawn's Wrath that gives us the minor sorcery buff for 20 seconds to you and to your group. So you gain an extra 5% um, to your spell damage by using Reflective Light, or basically any ability um, here will, will cause the Prism as well as the Illuminate passive to proc. And then, you, of course, you get the... Uh, the um, Increase spell critical. Uh, it's an extra 10%, as well as a slow, a damage up front, damage over time, and it's got nice range on it on the back bar. That's why I run it. And of course, with a decisive trait, when you you get an, an extra 40% chance to gain an extra one, so instead of generating three, it would generate four ultimate. Um, I'm using purifying light. I'm actually considering dropping purifying light to run unstable core. And like I was saying before. Um, a lot of times I don't necessarily like see seeing my target. Unfortunately, core doesn't like halt your opponent like every other stun. Um, it basically just puts a sphere around them and they can't use direct damage abilities against you, which is good when you're getting pressured by like a night blade and you just got ink capped. Um, but in terms of like actually ceasing your opponent, so I'm going to play around with it, see which one I like better. It's up to you what you want to do. Um, I found toppling charge works great up until I get to a point where I can't use it. Or if I'm fighting another Templar and they're just doing this and keeping me in front of them, it makes it difficult to be able to gap close because of the minimum range. Um, so I may drop that, run the Explosive Morph for more AoE damage, and then run Unstable Core in place of this. But Purifying Light does really good damage. Um, 
it does a tiny bit of damage up front it will also proc both the prism as well as the uh, illuminate passive as well as um, after it does after six seconds it does 20 percent of the damage that done to that opponent up to roughly 19,000 I think I have almost a 2,000 tooltip fully buffed up and then it leaves a little pool of healing light um, for six seconds it'll pulse every two seconds on the back bar running channel focus this is our major armor buff as well as giving us recovery basically gives us 480 recovery as well as giving us our as well as giving us our uh, resistance on the back bar on the back bar if you choose to run defending you're sitting at 37,000. you basically are capped if you run back bar defending but i think i'm going to stick with my decisive idea um, even though you will be sitting capped on the back bar on the front bar um, we're looking at right 33,000. excuse me we're looking at 30 sitting in the rune uh 33, 000 and roughly 29,000 when you're sitting inside your rune as well as gaining the region if you step out of it you'll still gain a region for 20 seconds as well as extended ritual for the cleanse back bar i'm currently running remembrance just because my resto alt is not 50 i think i prefer resto alt because remembrance just leaves you stuck you're sitting there like this for the four seconds you can choose to cancel it with a if you block cancel it but then you just don't get the heal and so basically all you get is the major protection from it for you and for your group um but I, i'd rather run the lights champion on the back bar uh, i'll get the heal for my for me and for my entire group as well as the buffs that come along with it i'll gain combat prayer um you'll gain the ward as well as whichever morph of regeneration that you choose it's just as cheap 120 versus 122 still aoe just like um, the other morph it's kind of op actually i think should be nerfed a little bit um but that's up to Zenimax. We just work with what they give us. Um, so that's basically all of our, 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 our abilities, front and back bar. Let's see, did I leave anything out? I think that's about it. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, go, just going over the stats again. Fully buffed up, we're going to be seeing. If you're running too protective, you're going to be roughly around 31,000 max magicka um, with the undaunted passive. Otherwise, if you just run the one, you'll be sitting just about 32.5 in terms of uh, your max spell damage, your max uh, magicka. We're going to be sitting roughly fully buffed up 23,000 health, as well as just nearing in on 15k um, max stamina. This build works great. Um, I've had a lot of fun, a lot of fun running it in, in no CP. That's a pretty weak heal circle down you can see roughly we're getting seven seven k crits um of course and that's at full health the templar gains a pass and we gain more health uh, from our heals the lower hp gets um so it's a really great build it's very tanky does a lot of damage um feel free to check me out on twitch it's infamous underscore underscore nyc i'll be posting some clips um from the build and i hope to see you out there on the battlefield take care god bless <laughs>